around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Out of it, if you don't mind. Come on. Mr. Green. Yes, Joe. Now, look here, cowboy. Sandy King's the name, Mr. Green. Don't you, Mr. Green, me. Okay. Hank, what's on your mind? Feeding you is on my mind. You've been eating here a whole week on credit, and you ain't paid a cent. Of course not. What do you mean, of course not? When a man eats on credit, he ain't supposed to pay, is he? Now, you look here. I'm broke, Hank. I'm broker than you are. Look at this place. I ain't got enough customers to pay for the water. The food's bad, Hank. That's the whole trouble. You've been eating it a whole week, you buzzard. <laughs> now it ain't that bad. <laughs> Sandy, you got more nerve than any man I ever met. But nerve ain't money, and I can't afford to feed you no more. So that's that. Well, now, Hank, maybe I have been kind of taking advantage of you. <laughs> You've got a real easy way of putting things. I'll make up for it. How? Go out there and fire that drunken cook you got. I'll take over for a week. How's that? You take over what? Cooking? Yeah. Well, how do I know you're any better than he is? Well, I'm not drunk. That'll be some improvement, won't it? I don't know. But you're right. He is a drunk. Well, I'll do it. But you better be good. Only one way to find out. That is good. Oh, Chester, good food is no excuse for hog manners. Any way a man can get it down is fair, the way I see it. Yeah, but you're not the one who has to see it. We are. Oh, Doc, let him eat in peace. The first good food we've had in Delmonico's in years. Uh, hello, Miss Kitty. Chester, Doc. Hello, hello. Hey, How are you hello. getting on here? Fine, eh? Fine. I've eaten here three times a day for a week, and it's getting better and better. Yeah, that cook of yours was a real fine, huh? Yeah, uh, he's a good boy, Sandy is. I'm going to put him on pay after today, and I'm going to pay him well, too. Are you shut? Well, what with the trail herd starting to arrive, you're going to get rich with him out in the kitchen, Hank. <laughs> they say the word's gone clean to Texas already. Yeah, things have sure changed around here. Yeah, I hear you put a leg iron on him at night and chain him to the bed. <laughs> I think I'll start doing that. <laughs> hey, you ready to leave, Chester? I don't know whether I can move or not. Well, maybe you better try, Chester. Hank's got other customers waiting. Oh, that's all right, Miss Kitty. Uh, we have to go anyway, Hank. Yeah, but we'll be back this evening. Well, come early. Avoid the rush. I'll be here at sundown. Good, good. Yeah, so long, Hank. Bye now. Bye. Hey, waiter. Oh, no. Waiter, come on over here. Hey, Joe. Yes, sir. You better go over and see what that man wants. Hey, wait. I, I was fixing to clean this table off, Mr. Green. Joe, take care of him first. Yes, sir. I'll get somebody else to clean the table. Well, it's about time. What's the trouble? I told you I wanted these eggs turned over. Oh, so you take him back, and you just be quick about it. I ain't going to sit here all day. But I look what things that we've got to eat, and you order eggs. Never mind what I ordered. Just take him away and bring him back done right, you hear? All right, all right. And don't take all day with him. bring cold pork, I don't have enough work to do. Hey, Sandy, the man wants his eggs turned over. I ain't got time. 
You got your He's pretty mean about it. I don't care how mean he is. What do you order eggs for anyway? We ain't serving breakfast. He's half drunk. Maybe he thinks it's breakfast. All right. Here. There, they're turned over. Take them back to him. Oh, now, no, Sandy, now, you just make him mad. He wanted them cooked more. I turned them over like he asked, didn't I? No, but... He uh, won't know the difference. Well, maybe not, but what if he does? Then tell him to go eat someplace else. Okay, Sandy, but I, I don't think that you can fool him even if he is half drunk. Yeah. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, one steak. Beans. Let's see, potatoes. Good. What do you want? That was awful smart. What you done? I told you it'd make you mad. Nobody fools me like that. Now, you wanted your eggs turned over, didn't you? I'll show you what I think of your eggs. <laughs> <laughs> you? Oh. It's Sandy. Now, look what you've done. That'll teach him to shove his eggs in my face. Ah, but you could have killed him with that skillet. Oh, throw some water on him and get him out of here. Well, now, wait a minute. What? It's Sandy. He's dead. What? You killed him. Yeah. Oh. Look, uh... Don't tell nobody about this. Are you crazy? I mean, for a while. Uh, give me a half hour. I've got a horse over at the stable. They'll never catch me. But, 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 uh, Sandy. Now, say goodbye to Hank Green for me. Three decades of travel, keen observing, frontline reporting of virtually every world crisis, and a natural born flair for word artistry. These are the prime assets of one of the great veterans of CBS News, Mr. Lowell Thomas. Monday through Friday evenings, Lowell Thomas offers the latest news in detail and depth, plus his own witty, seasoned comment on each story. There's no substitute for experience. Indeed, no substitute for Lowell Thomas when it comes to news in full sound color on CBS Radio and this station. And come Saturday night, whet your appetite for inside stories on show business with CBS Radio's Mitch Miller Show. Top names of show business beat a well-trodden path every weekend to Mitch Miller's lair. You hear their plans, their dreams, the backstage shop talk that makes this weekly program fascinatingly informative. Remember, on most of these same stations, Saturday... The Mitch Miller Show. I swear I just can't believe it, Mr. Dillon. Sandy killing a man like that. Yeah, he lost his temper, I guess. Whole Hank Green sure gonna miss him. So is everybody else in Dodge for that matter. Including you, huh? Oh my goodness, yes. Well, he's the best cook Del Monaco's ever had. Maybe it was just an accident like that waiter said. Even so, Chester, he killed a man. He's got to stand trial for it. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, that sun's getting mighty low. Can you still see the tracks? Yeah, they lead toward that hill over there. Let's move. What if we don't find him before dark? We'll have to sleep on the prairie and pick up his trail in the morning. Hold up, Chester. Why, that's the longest, strongest out bunch of cattle I've saw in quite a spell. Not going to be much help to us. If it was a river, we could swim across. There's nothing to do but wait. Mr. Dillon, here comes one of the men. Maybe he saw Sandy. Hello. Howdy. Headed for Dodge? Yeah. Hey, you're a lawman. Dillon, U.S. Marshal. My name's Purdy. I'm trail boss of this outfit. What are you doing out here, Marshal? Looking for a man, but your herd cut right across his trail. Well, maybe he's seen us coming, done it on purpose. Well, he's smart enough. Well, I always like to see a man get away. Nothing personal, Marshal. I understand. How's the cattle market in Dodge, Marshal? Holding up, holding up fine. Good. This ain't no trail to ride for the fun of it. 
Well, I better get all up ahead and tell them to start milling the herd. It'll be dark before long. I don't like to push cattle after dark. I appreciate you not trying to cut through them, Marsh. We can wait. Say, uh, I hear there's a good cook in Dodge for a change. A fella come down the trail yesterday, told us about it. Uh, there was. Well, ain't he still there? Uh, he's the man we're after. Oh. Well, the men were kind of looking forward to a good meal, Marshal. He killed a man, Purdy. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll tell the man, but they ain't gonna like it, Marshal. I'll tell him I don't like it either. Yeah. Well, so long. Uh, you'd think Sandy King was only good cook in Kansas. Well, you know a better one. Well, I'm sure I don't guess I do. Mr. Stone, you, you think we lost his trail? Well, if we ever get across there, we might pick it up. I'll have to make camp and wait for daylight. Now, boy, we'll get some feed and rest and be on our way. You stop right there. Uh, what? What do you want here? Well, say something. Uh, I, I ain't gonna harm you. How could you? I got a shotgun, ain't I? Now, don't be scared, miss. I ain't gonna hurt you. That's close enough. All right. How come you put your horse in our barn? I had to get him out of the sun, didn't I? Uh, you don't mind if I rest a minute before moving on? Well, uh, I guess it's all right. Now, you don't need that shotgun. Must be getting kind of heavy. Well, uh... I didn't know who you was. My name's Sandy. What's yours? Effie. Gus Trahorn's my pa. I guess you've heard of him. Can't say as I have. Is he around someplace? He rode north today. We got a water hole up by Shale Bluff. Oh. And your ma? I never knew my ma. Effie, uh, you got any cold water up the house? Yes, we do. Uh, could I have some? Uh, if it's not too much bother, I'm terrible thirsty. I guess it would be all right. I need no bother to it. Come on. You know something, Evie? What? I don't really need that drink of water. You don't? I was passing by through the trees there, and I seen you come out of the house. I wanted to say hello, that's all. I wanted to meet you, Effie. What, what for? Because you're the prettiest gal I ever seen. Oh, well, you must know lots of gals. No, no, I'm a lonely man, Effie. Mighty lonely man. A drifter, Effie. And I guess I never found no reason to settle down. But that's bad for a person. I mean, everybody should have somebody. Don't you think? Well, that ain't always easy to find, Effie. No. No, it sure ain't. I've heard of it happening, though. Just like that, when you least expect it. Right out of a clear blue sky. Tell me about it. All right. All right, I'll tell you about it, Effie. Come on in the house, Sandy. Pa, Pa, don't shoot him. I heard you cooing in here. Look, Mr. Strayhorn, it's not what you think. I wondered whose horse that was in the barn. How long you known this boy? We just met Pa. I'd shoot you right here, boy. But I don't want to mess up the place. I'll get outside. Pa, please listen to me. You don't want to watch this stay in the house, Effie. Pa, you can't shoot a man for one kid. It's all right, Effie. You can't stop him. Nobody can stop me. Outside. Pa, please. Please listen to me, Pa. He didn't do anything. Please, Pa, honest. Listen now, you to move right over there, mister. That's far enough. Pa. Pa, please. Hold on. What's going on here? Well, you won't shoot him now, Pa. You know this man? You're Marshal Dillon, ain't you? That's right. Now, put that gun away. Okay. But that don't mean I ain't gonna kill him. He don't know me, Marshal. He don't know nothing about me. You mean he's wanted by the law? For murder. 
Oh, no. He's a murderer to boot. <laughs> Gal, you sure can flick him, can't you? Well, Sandy, looks like we got here just in time, doesn't it? To save me for a hanging? That cord will decide that. Where's your horse? In the barn. Go get it, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, he sure made himself right to home. There's golf for you, ain't it? Let's go, Sandy. Miss Dillon? Oh, uh, what, Chester? Come here. Look out yonder. They're forming a mob. Yeah, looks like those trail hands we ran across on the prairie. Purdy's men. The word sure does get around fast, don't it? When it comes to trouble, it does. He ain't back in town five minutes, and there they are. And all over Sandy, just because he's a good cook. It also gives them a chance to show up the law if they can. And they're always wanting to do that, ain't they? If they could force me to turn Sandy loose, they'd have a free hand in this town. But they haven't got it yet. Where are you going to do that shotgun? You stay inside. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Quiet! Sandy King is in jail because he killed a man. And he'll stay there until he gets a trial. Men want him out, Marshal. Now, Bertie, I'm afraid I can't oblige him. Are all these your men? Some of them. I reckon most of mine are here, Marshal. I didn't expect to find a man like you taking part in a mob. They tell me some drunk throwed a plate of eggs in that cook's face, Marshal. That's no reason to kill a man. Well, the cook did hit him, but they say he didn't mean to kill him. Yeah. He'll get a trial and a fair one. I can't help you, Marshal. The men want him out. Yeah. Marshal! Marshal, you got yourself ten minutes. Now, Santa King ain't out here in ten minutes. We're going to start shooting. Then so do I. Now, ten minutes, men. That's all he's got. <laughs> Bad, don't you, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Well, I locked up our back. Nobody can't get in there without us hearing him. Good. What are you doing with that shotgun? Well, if there's going to be a shooting, I ain't going to get left out of it. This is a part of the game you don't have to sit in on, Chester. Mm, it's all right. I ain't got nothing else to do. You Marshal Dillon? I am. I'm John Grissom, Marshal. Texas Rangers. Can I come in? Come on in. I just pulled into town. What's the mob for? Trail hands trying to show up the law. What can I do for you? Well, I got a warrant here, Marshal. Heard the man was headed toward die. Let me see it. Hmm. You know him? He's dead, Grissom. Dead? What is it, Mr. Dillon? This is an arrest warrant for Ed Fisher. As a reward, dead or alive. Ed Fisher. Oh, I'll be doggone. Who killed it? Man, I got locked up in jail for it, Sandy King. Is that what that crowd's all about? Yeah. Your prisoner seems to be a popular man, Marsh. He's a good cook. He's a good cook? Chester, go tell Sandy the news and let him out as soon as I break up this mob. Yes, sir. Come with me, Grissom. All right, Marshal. Listen to me. This is Joe Grissom, Texas Ranger. He just brought me a warrant for the arrest of Ed Fisher. That's the man Sandy killed. He was wanted, dead or alive. <laughs> Why, you turn him loose, Marshal. He's got no reason to hold him now. All right. All right. I got no choice. I'll turn Sandy loose. But first, but first you break this mob up and get out of here. We want him now, Marshal. Wait a minute. No mob ever ruled me yet, and no mob ever will. Now, you men clear out of here. Or start shooting. All right, men. Let's go have a drink. You turn him loose. Yeah. Marshal, he just better be out 
Well, Marsha, you got what you were after. You made them break up. Yeah. Hey, tell me something. How does uh, Sandy King kill Ed Fisher, anyway? He hit him on the head with an iron skillet. <laughs> but it was provoked. I think the judge would let him off pretty easy. You were going to a lot of trouble to bring him to trial, weren't you? Wouldn't you have, Grizzle? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I kind of thought so. Now, here he is, Mr. Dillon. Sandy, this is Joe Grizzle. Howdy. Howdy. Chester told me all about it. I'm a free man, huh? Yeah, free man. There's a $500 reward, mister. Fish was wanted dead or alive. Well, now, I'm mighty broke, it's true, but uh, I'm afraid that kind of money just wouldn't do me any good, Grizzle. Thanks, just the same. Whatever you say. Well, Marshal, I'll be moving on, I guess. Moving on? Yeah, I've always had a hankering to see California, Chester. I guess this is as good a time as any. Well, but look here. Everybody's expecting you back at Delmonico's to cook up a whole batch of fancy vittles. What do you think this whole row is about, anyway? Tell them I'm sorry, Chester. I was just cooking to pay off a debt. I don't want to make a living at it. Besides, I hate cooking. Well, I'll be doggone. So long. So long, Marshal. Well, <clears throat> Miss Dillon, ain't you going to stop him? The, the men are going to be awful mad. He's a free man, Chester. Funny thing is, that's how the men wanted it. Hi, this is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's All Bran. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole bran, Kellogg's All Bran gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one all brand, Kellogg's All Brand. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. Gun Smoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Harris. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Vic Perrin, John Daner, Gene Bates, Ben Wright, Harry Bartell, and Larry Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gun Smoke. CBS News goes double for you every weekday on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>